There are many networking solutions available for Unity, such as Photon, Netcode, and many others. But the one that I am using, and will be setting up today, is Mirror Networking. Mirror is a free open-source networking solution that does client-server peer-to-peer, but it also supports dedicated server models if needed. It is still being supported by a large community and improving every day. You can find more on that in their documentation, which I will link below. To get started, we will set up a new project in Unity. I am currently using Unity version 2021.3.25 with Mirror version 71.0.0. You can use any version you like, but it is recommended to use the LTS releases. First, open the Unity Hub and create a new project. For this tutorial, I am selecting the 2D template, but Mirror also works for 3D games as well. Set your project name, the location, and click Create Project. Now once the project is open, I am going to rename my scene so it makes more sense. Go to the Unity Asset Store and search for Mirror. Add it to your assets. Next, go back to Unity. Go up to the Window tab, Package Manager, and find the Mirror package that you just added to your assets. Click on Import. Make sure everything is selected and click Import again. Now that Mirror is imported, let's go to the folder and find the README text. In this file, it shows that you must restart Unity after importing Mirror for the Components menu to update. Let's go ahead and do that. Once you have the project open again, go to your scene. We will start by setting up the Network Manager. Create a new game object. Add the Network Manager component to it. To make things simple, add another component to it called Network Manager HUD. The HUD component gives us UI buttons to test the network connections. One last thing to add to the Network Manager is the transport. For now, I am going to adding the KCP transport. But there are other transports you can use such as telepathy or relay transports for Steam, Epic, and others. We want to make sure this transport is added to the Network Manager component network setting by dragging the Network Manager object to that field. Now we will set up the player prefab. Add a new square game object for the player. If you are doing a 3D game, you can add a cube or capsule. Add a network identity component to it. Each network object needs to have a network identity component. In future tutorials, I will show how to separate networked objects and non-network scene objects. I'm going to turn the gizmos off for now so we can see the player object. To do that, click this button up here. Now make the player a prefab by dragging it to the project folder. Go back to the Network Manager and drag the new player prefab to the player prefab setting in the inspector. Make sure Auto Create Player is set to True, and you can now delete the player object in the hierarchy. Don't forget to save the scene. To test multiple players, we will use an extension called Peril Sync, which you can search for on Google and download through GitHub. I will also put a link to that in the description below. Peril Sync 
allows you to open multiple clone instances of your project so you can have one open for each player for testing. Each time you edit your main project, it will sync over to the other instances automatically. I am downloading version 1.5.1 of Perilsync, which is the latest version. Click on the Unity package to download. Go back to Unity and import this package by going up to the Assets tab, Import Package, Custom Package, and selecting the file you just downloaded. Click on Import. Now that it's imported, go up to the new Perilsync tab, Clones Manager. This is where each clone of the project you make will be. Click on Create New Clone. This is Clone 0, which we can use for Player 2. Click on Open in New Editor to open a clone instance of the project. Now you can run both editors and you will see this HUD appear on both screens. For the left player, we will click on Host to start the server. On the right player, which will be Player 2, we will click on Client to join the server. Notice that we are just joining localhost for now. That will change once you have your own servers to connect to. We are going to create a simple player move script that will allow us to move each player independently. I am calling the script Player Move. Once the script is open, you can remove all of the default code. At the top, add the mirror library. Objects using the network will not use mono behavior. Instead, they will use the network behavior, which will allow you to use network API functions such as commands, client RPCs, and sync vars. In the update function, we are going to do a network check to see if the code is running off the local player. This means the code will only work for that player and it won't affect any of the other players on the network. Once you add the movement code, save the script and go back to the main Unity editor. Go to your player prefab in the project folder. Add the player move script you just created to the player prefab. Run one player as the host, then the other as a client. Click and move the players in each editor. Notice how each player doesn't see the other player moving. Go back to Unity and to your player prefab. We will add another component called Network Transform Reliable. Also change the sync direction to client to server. I will go over more of the sync settings in a future video. Save the project and run them both again. You can now see each player's movement sync between both instances. That's all there is to it. Mirror has a bunch of helpful examples in their plugin that will show how to set up other features. If you run into any issues while following this tutorial or want anything specific that you want me to cover, put them in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to support the channel and subscribe to stay updated on future videos. Thank you for watching.